And that's why sometimes you have to call in backup. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Cover Band Confidential Podcast, a podcast for band leaders and cover band musicians who want to rock more and suck less. Here in Greensboro, North Carolina, I'm Dan Ray. And normally I am joined from Atlanta, Georgia, by my boy, Adam Johnson. But he's off doing spring break stuff with his family. He actually sent us a video of a bear wandering through the <laughs> compound that, he, <laughs> that he's in. It's crazy. So uh, today I have a special guest, John Pisano from Jukebox Productions, who's one of our patrons, been in the Slack for a while and has quite a story that when we heard it, we knew we needed our listeners to hear about this and know that this was possible. So welcome, John. Great to have you. Hey, thank you. It's great to be here, yeah, actually. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, and so we have a we have an introductions channel that people introduce themselves in, and uh, John came and told his story in there. It was pretty it was pretty impressive, and actually, a couple of people reached out to me in, in DMs and said, boy, you should have him on the pod. Yeah, oh, no. we should, and so <laughs> Adam out of town and nothing else to talk about. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was time. It was definitely time. Well, I'm honored, Dan. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome. So um, how did you start this whole band thing? What's your backstory? My backstory? Wow. Well, I, like a lot of folks, got into music at a young age and played through my 20s trying to make it in the L.A. scene. But I got married and had kids and had to get a real job, right. which I did. And basically traveled the world for 15, 20 years almost with the same company. And it was awesome. But 2008 hit and there was a big recession, mm -hmm. obviously. Yep. And my company went bankrupt. Um, they had been around for almost 80 years and they went under. In the meantime, I had gotten back to music a little bit playing bar band stuff and um, just enjoying myself. My kids were a little older. It was easier to do. But there's a few things that converged around that 2008 period. One was I lost my job. The other was my wife decided to leave me for my guitar player. Mm. <laughs> so that was that was fun. Yeah. Um, and uh, I decided I was going to stop drinking at that time, too. Gotcha. Deciding to stop and actually stopping is are two different things. So it, that took a little bit to, to gotcha. kind of yep. uh, take hold. But I, I just had the opportunity to kind of reimagine my life. And oddly enough, I decided to put together a corporate events and wedding band. And I had no idea what that was or even how to do it. But I didn't want to really be involved in the bar scene anymore yep. and thought that would be, of course, there's plenty of booze still in those situations. Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> and this is not an uh, advertisement for AA, by the way. But it's well, just, no, but, it's I, kind but of I've certainly heard that before. I've heard uh, um, there was a guy who played guitar with a friend of mine who was in recovery and fairly new, newly in recovery. And sure, sure. Um, yeah, it was like three or four gigs in. He was like, yeah, I can't do this. Yeah. I was like, all right, yeah. buddy, that is the right call for you. Get him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God bless. We'll hey, find another guitarist. It's fine. And early on, that's a thing for sure. Yeah. Um, and some people can't ever do it. And I, God bless them. Yeah. You know? um, but anyway, I had some friends that did the corporate event band thing. And I just started reaching out and getting as much advice as I could on how to put together a band yeah. that was geared towards that function. Man, started out just winging it and <laughs> yeah. picking up gigs here and there right. and playing for nothing, relatively speaking, to, to just pick up whatever events we could to get our name out there and also to build reviews, which, by the way, I found out over the years is the most important thing. All right, we'll come back to that. Um, so um, I still had to continue to work, and I did. And eventually, I'm just really fast forwarding through a bunch of stuff, yeah. but eventually about seven years ago, the ban income was enough for me to go full time. Nice. And, uh, you know, it was still beans and rice a little bit, <laughs> yeah. but, um, <laughs> but it, was, it was time where I could make that change. And it was scary, but I decided... I wanted to go for it. Why not? You know? Um, and so I went into it full time and that's really when the business got serious. That's when I knuckled down and really just figured out how to manage finances, how to manage a team really well. What, what do I want to invest in as far as advertising and gear and all that stuff? Yeah. That's something that I've heard over and over again. Something about going all in. <laughs> Something about taking away the safety net, <laughs> right? It yeah. focuses yeah. you in a very particular way, right? Yeah. I've always been surrounded by really smart people who were willing to mentor me and help me with things. You know, once I did get serious and want to make a business out of it, 
I had to stop approaching it as a musician and start looking at it as a real business, right. you know? Right. If I was going to open a candy shop, how would I do it? Yep. What would I do? Yep. Uh, Loving candy isn't really the answer. No, no, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. It's not. And in fact, people ask me now, what's my favorite part of playing? I'm like, playing it is, is the easy part. <laughs> um, yeah. The business end of it is really what I do, right. you know? Right. But anyway, you know, there was a learning curve, obviously, yeah. um, when I decided to go full time. But things really picked up. I got over some of my hangups as far as pricing goes mm -hmm. and really started to increase prices relative to value and understood better the dynamics on how to manage and how to delegate and really where to to create a team that had some longevity. Mm -hmm. I've had people with me now for over 10 years. Wow. And in fact, uh, the current band in San Diego, they're all at least seven years mm. with me. That's great. We got to a point where things were just rolling. And I talked to my wife and I said, I don't want to retire in California. I'd like to figure out a way where we can get out of here for a multitude of reasons. So we started looking and it became obvious that with our schedule, we had 60 events a year and those weren't bar events. Uh, you know, gigs. Every one of those events required a lot of planning. And then I was the performer on drums for those events too, and the band leader. But then COVID hit and um, everything shut down, especially in California. Yeah. What became obvious was, and it, you have to, you have to check your ego, man, because I've always wanted to be the guy, mm -hmm. you know, but what I found over the years is that if you can train everybody else to be the guy. Yeah. And I had done that. I put everybody, empowered everybody to be leaders, and especially one person in particular who was my band leader. And I had also, over that time, found a guy who could play drums for me. Mm. My wife and I love to go to Europe. We love to go for a month. Yeah. And when you have that kind of a schedule, it's hard to do that right. unless you have a band leader who can do everything and a drummer or whatever that can take your spot. And then to leave and not have to worry about it. That's huge. Yeah. There's a, there's a quote that is attributed to the Buddha, but people only tell half of it. The half people tell is, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Have you heard that one? When the student I is ready, think I have, the probably. teacher appears. But the full quote ends with, when the student is truly ready, the teacher disappears. Hmm. Wow. Right? So that, you that had is... some people ready to take you over and be you there, and you could just back off. You just back away, and they could rise into those positions, right? Yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. You know, it's a weird feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I still own it. Um, I still do all the sales side of it. But once I'm done with that, I hand it off now. Yeah. And I, of course, I'm still concerned the, that everything goes as it has to. Of course. Right? The ultimate objective is always to get a five-star review. Yeah. And to do that, you have to be spectacular at everything all the time. It's a lot of pressure, but I don't have that pressure there now. They do, mm -hmm. and they they have a sense of ownership that drives them to achieve that. That's great, you know. In, in fact, in fact, check this out. This is how this works, right? So I get a call. There's a company that wants a jukebox in Maui for an event on May 9th. Wow. And, yeah, right. And um, I'm like, okay, great. Well, you know, we've got two bands. We've got, and I'm hoping, of course, that they decide they want the Idaho band. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have two bands. There's the San Diego band and there's the Boise band. And uh, take a look and decide which one you'd rather have. And she comes back, yeah, I think we like the San Diego band. I'm like, oh, damn it. Because <laughs> they're busier. They're but, way busier. It's not that they're busier, but I wanted to go to oh, Hawaii to play. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, so this is a part of the story that we maybe glossed over there. So you have moved now to Boise, Idaho, and replicated oh, yeah. that whole band there in Boise, right? Jeez, how quickly I forget. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, right. so I came out here with my wife about two and a half years ago, and we fell in love. And we had a house in San Diego. We went home, put it on the market. Actually, we kind of had a six-month move plan during COVID. Mm -hmm. So we we got everything ready to, to sell. And I started reaching out, making connections here, networking, finding musicians, setting up auditions. I felt like I needed to have a, a band here. And part of it is the camaraderie that comes with being in a band. For sure. You know, yep. it's like I wasn't ready to give that up. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a vet, right? So I come from the military 
And, you know, that's something you never lose, that band of brothers thing. Right. But anyway, so I came out here and I found a production company that could hook me up with a room and rehearsal gear and stuff like that. So um, I started holding auditions. And what I found was that there are some really great musicians here, mm. but none of them, they're all bar band musicians. Yeah. None of them have event band experience. None of them. I decided that I was going to formulate this band based on personalities mm. in, in many respects. And I realized too, that this band, unlike California, California, you have San Diego and Orange County have 7 million people right. in those two adjacent counties yeah. here. To get to 7 million people, you have to have five states. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I knew there was going to be a lot of travel involved if I was successful here and that I was going to be spending a lot of time with these people. And so I wanted to find some best friends mm. is really kind of how I looked at this. That's great. And, um, right. I know it's kind of weird, but. <laughs> well, it's one of the, it's one of the factors, right? We've said on the pod before there, there are three important things, the money, the hang and the music. And as long as at least two of them work, that's a good situation. Oh, uh, that is great. And that's true. Absolutely. Yeah. So you focused on hang, which is valid. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the things you got to be aware of, because you're going to be a, with these people for a lot of your life. So it better be fun. Yeah. Well, ideally, right? You'll yeah. be with them. Right. If things are working. <laughs> then you're going to yeah, spend a lot of know? good time with them. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So I, I really, it took me about six months to find the right people and then the easier part for me was that I had this idea that I could use San Diego as a template. I you know, already had a successful operation out there and I didn't need to reinvent the wheel, right? What I had to do was take that example and use it to build the same concept here yeah. with the same ideally the same quality. Obviously it's different musicians, you've got different vocalists, you've got different kinds of stage presence. You've got factors that build in. And I'll tell you, initially, I wanted to shove them into this box to make them just like San Diego because mm. it was easy. And plus, you know, well, you knew me, it. It was it comfortable. Was like, it was. Yeah. Yeah. When we do this song, this is the move you do. And you know right, what I mean? right. Um, <laughs> but uh, I stepped back from that and just let these guys do their thing. And it became a, a different situation. Um, if you look at the two bands side by side, our marketing is very similar. Mm. But it, we just actually, we just had our first gig where I brought both bands into the same venue and, and we performed. It was a charity event. And we had San Diego and Boise and we both played. And that's, it, it was fantastic. Awesome. It, and it was different. It was like two different bands, but you could like, like the brother and sister, mm. they're just not twins. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's cool. It is cool. And it's, and it's a tribute to, you know, I appreciate how much we sometimes talk about like, what is it to be a front person, right? What is front right. manning? But so sure. much of that is about your personality shining, right? And that's true for everyone, all the way to like a really well-expressed drummer. It looks and feels and sounds very different on stage from anybody else. And so sure. even two, two bands designed from kind of the same brand, they're going to feel different on stage because they're different humans. Mm -hmm. ah, it's really cool. Absolutely. It's really cool. And, and frankly, I am, I'm now a little biased. I like my Boise band. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, don't tell San Diego. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, San Diego. It's funny, but I got to tell you what happened was in putting these, this band together out here, San Diego mentored these guys. Awesome. There were situations where to begin with, I didn't have a male vocalist and my band leader, male vocalist out in San Diego was coming out and doing events with us. Um, and so he really had a chance to kind of help qualify everything that I was trying to do out here, mm. um, motivate people. Hey, this is, you know, what it can be like with this. And, uh, we just got to work hard and make this happen. And my female vocalist, the same thing. She had to come out here a few different times and she was just fantastic as far as just helping to create a team environment. Mm. Right. Like I didn't have to do that. They did it. Yeah. And I find, I got to tell you, man, the more I step back, the more it seems to happen yeah. and the better it is yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. 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 And I think the times that I've done that in my music life and in my, in my career and other places, it's a function of, I've built a vision for it that people can see for themselves and can mm -hmm. buy into for themselves and find themselves in. 
And then once that happens, like I'm unnecessary. <laughs> In my day job, I have two people reporting to me who are so much better at the day to day of what we do than I am. So much. Okay, better. that's fair. And, right. And like my job is to keep them aimed at the right strategic targets and then stay out of their way. I totally get it. So I totally good. get it now. Yeah. Right. Right. Yes. You know. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. But um, it, it's not easy. It. it because it's your baby. It's your baby. Yeah. And you cling yeah. to it tightly, right? Yeah. A lot less than I used to exactly. at this point. Exactly. An example of that is uh, side rehearsals going on here. Uh, horn section rehearsals, mm. uh, vocal rehearsals. Hey, this is interesting. Yeah. Because uh, I just found this out, right? I'm not structuring any of these things. And I'm not even dictating that these rehearsals happen. Wow. They're getting together and doing it on their own. Wow. Wow. Right? And I'm finding out about it secondhand. <laughs> nice. I just found out today that my DJ had our, you know, we have two female vocalists. We're a seven piece. So two female vocalists and a male vocalist. He decided to have our second female vocalist work on, train her on how to DJ. Wow. Just as a potential backup. Wow. And I didn't even know that was happening. That's amazing. It, like, right? What am yeah. I doing here? What are you doing here? Exactly. I'm going to go to Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of here. Find <laughs> another drummer and you're gone. I love it. I love it. Exactly. Now, that, that actually leads us into another thing that I wanted to talk about, which is you have this DJ member, right? I don't want to say mm -hmm. partnership, but like you have a DJ who's part of the band, kind of. Oh, no. He's a band member. Right. Absolutely. So talk, talk, kind of. Yeah. Talk to us about that. Yeah. So um, let's just say for argument, it was 10 years ago. Okay. You know, bands were competing very heavily with DJs, mm -hmm. and not that they don't still, but there seems to be a kind of a turn back to bands yes. there right now. But we were competing hardcore with DJs, and it's hard to compete with a DJ for They're many cheaper, reasons. Cheaper, they put on a similar kind of show. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I, uh, yeah, as I, a musician, I don't know. I'm not sure I believe that entirely, but they, they, I, can, they know, can make but, a room happen, right? Like. That's yeah. I think that there's versatility that happens there. There's the ability to change on a dime. Yes, they have uh, you know unlimited repertoire. Yep. And you did mention the price, but even good DJs are are not cheap now. That's true. Um, That's true. They're not. So there's a lot of that. And the other thing is it's nonstop. Mm -hmm. A DJ doesn't ever stop. So if you hire a three hour a DJ for three hours. You're going to have a DJ for three hours. Right. But a band, we do concert sets sometimes that are two hours. Um, but I find if we go that long, usually people get fatigued. Yes. Right? So a band has always had to take a break. And when you take a break, there's a couple things that happen. One is a lot of times you, depending on the situation, it's almost like a trigger for people to leave. Yes. You know, and no matter what the band does, if you put on a Spotify list, for instance, um, that's fine. I mean, it could be okay, but it doesn't really continue the party. Right. It has some continues maybe some background music and that's about it right anyway about 10 years ago when we we're going through all of this how am i going to compete with the dj situation i went to a black eyed peas concert and my buddy was doing the staging for it so he got me a backstage pass and i'm always looking what can i do like what can i do better right watching right right and what happened was black eyed peas they're a full band and they're a full frontline production the whole thing um, but at one point in the show and there's, I don't know, 10,000 people out front, mm -hmm. right? Partying, just loving it. Totally. And at one point, they had a costume change. And when that happened, the whole band came off stage, except for the DJ, Will I Am. Mm -hmm. And so the music never stopped. It wasn't like, well, now the DJ is going to take over. <laughs> right. It was, yeah. <laughs> it was just, it just flowed, mm -hmm. right? And so Will I Am's playing, and the crowd is equally as pumped. Yeah. They're having a great time. Yeah. You know, he's doing his whole routine. And the band's off stage for maybe 10 minutes. I see them doing this whole costume change thing backstage. So they come back on. Well, I got. I don't even know if people are noticing the band's coming on. But the band gets back in position. I'm behind the drummer, so I see what he's doing. And they come right in on top of Will I Am. And now it's live. Yeah. But it, there's no segue. Yeah. It was amazing. Yep. And I'm like, fuck. I can't cuss. Um, <laughs> we, I'm like, do, we do try to check the family friendly box. I, I, I know, I know, I got yeah, you. All right. um, so kids don't cuss. Yeah, right. It's bad for you. Yeah, it's bad. For Unless you're ex military and then you can't. Let it rip. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You earned it. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, I I, I got it. it mm. a, a light bulb went off, and I'm like, you know what? This is the answer. 
it wasn't the answer to the price scenario, of course, because <laughs> <Right. laughs> now I'm adding another member. And then little did I know, especially back then, how difficult it was going to be to try to find a DJ that wanted to be part of a band, uh -huh. you know, because the concept that I had based on what I saw required somebody who was a band member. Yeah, that business of merging in and out seamlessly, thats that takes a kind of coordination that lone wolf DJs are probably not born ready to do. Like, that takes well, some work. Well, yeah. Right? No, 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 for sure. And then the other thing is that um, DJs are, they're individuals. Yes. They work independent, right. you know. Right. And so trying to find one that wants to be in a band is a weird thing too, mm -hmm. right? And then I had this other qualification that I thought would be interesting and helpful and that would be that if the dj could be a party pumper which is typical of a sure, good dj of course, yeah and then also too it would be fun to have somebody who maybe handled the raps because i didn't have that at that time mm -hmm. and i found a guy it took a while but i found a guy and, and he still works with me by the way and he helped to define how this was going to be done and along the way you know he he just became super important in everything that we did mm. so that that's an element that we have and what that means for us is that we don't stop yeah we don't ever stop so when we're doing an event we kick it in live almost always if it's four hours it doesn't matter the difference between a spotify list and a live dj pumping the party while he's djing it's night and day it's night it and is day. night and day yeah it is night and day, yeah. and it keeps everybody happy, yeah. and people don't leave. That's so cool. It's one of the things, when you talked about that on the Slack, I don't think I've ever seen anyone integrate a DJ so deeply into a band like that. I've certainly seen bands bring in DJs to, quote-unquote, do a set during their break. Sure, but that's sure. not it's not the same thing, and that's not what you're doing at all. You have that guy built into the experience of it at the bones of the thing. And, sure. Uh, Boy, it's super cool. Well, it is cool. And if you do it right, it takes time, mm. it takes effort sure. and energy. I forgot to mention DJs. We did talk about the price of a DJ. Mm -hmm. A lot of them make a lot of money now. Yeah. And so you got to yeah. find one, a good DJ who's yeah. going to be happy um, making a band member rage. You <laughs> right. know, that right. There's an upside to being in a band. You don't have to bring your own PA. You yeah. don't have to deal with the client. You don't have to, mostly. Um, I try to use those features to help me with that. Yeah. So there were two things that came out of your telling your story that I want to circle back on and get a little more detail on. And one was reviews. So tell mm -hmm. me about the impact of reviews, your strategy around that, what just uh, unload that whole world for us. Okay. Well, when I first started doing this, Gig Masters was, you remember Gig Masters? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, that was how I found my events mm. at the time. And at the time it was unique. Yeah. Is that, it's, it's become the not, am I right? That that's, that's what that company well, gig, is now? Uh, I don't know if you want to go through that yeah, whole thing. Whole but thing yeah. Gig yeah, Gig Masters is now something else. The Knot and Wedding Wire have mm. teamed up, and they're kind of a wedding pro, right. now is what they're called. Right. Oh, okay. But anyway, back to this whole routine with the reviews. You know, I, I just, yeah, I'm constantly looking at the competition. Yeah. I have to be. And what I noticed was that the bands that were getting booked were the ones that had the reviews. Mm. And it was really a tough sell if you didn't have a number of reviews to help tell that story for you. Yeah. Obviously those are verified reviews. People, you might have to explain that to people sometimes, but if you can't just write a review and have it stick there, everything gets qualified and verified. Yeah. And so they're valuable. They really are. They tell your story from the perspective of a couple or a company mm -hmm. or a wedding planner can write a review for you or an event planner, they can write those reviews to industry colleagues mm -hmm. can help you out with those things too. So what happened was I decided I was going to focus on the review part of things and I was going to give away events just to get reviews. Mm. And that's not unique to me. I don't mean give away, but I mean, whatever. Price law. I'll discount thing. Yeah. Right, right. Once we started doing that, um, and actually gaining reviews, things started to snowball. And I found that the more reviews we had, the easier it was for me to close a deal. Mm. Um, and that also too, the more inquiries that we received. I mean, it's not magic. It just is what it is. Yeah. Everybody now is, it's a review world, yeah. isn't it? Yelp and, uh, you know, God help us. Let's not Yelp. Yeah, um, Google reviews. And there are Google a ton reviews. of platforms, right? There are a ton of platforms. And so 
what I've decided for me personally is that investing in the knot and wedding wire has been a really good thing for me. Hmm. Uh, and weddings are a big part of our business. Gotcha. We've got a significant number of reviews on on both, and we've won the Knot Hall of Fame, which is a really a great thing for us. It just tells the you know anybody, and even wedding pros that you're working with, or just industry pros, they see that you you have that, and it means something. Hmm. And the downside to that is you know some of these newer sites, booking sites, I might want to try, but the problem is I can't start from scratch right. <laughs> with my review right. situation. Right. Anyway, to that point though, it's built into our workflow. Hmm. When we finish an event, there's a, an email that goes out that says, Hey, thank you so much. And it's complimentary and it's not a boilerplate. Some of it is, but I take time to write a really great, you know, the, I can't believe the friggin' rainbow just came down right when the mm. ceremony ended. And yeah. 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 Whatever. Call it out. Right. Like this, whatever was special about that event, whatever. Yeah. It's going to absolutely bring back the memory right? of that for those people. Yeah. Personalize totally, it totally, for totally. sure. Yeah. And I don't ask for a review. I send out a letter, an email, and I just say, thank you so much, you guys. And if we got a nice tip or something, I'll obviously mention that too. But inevitably, and I stumbled on this, by the way, inevitably, they will respond back with an email that is equally as complimentary mm. as the van, about the band. Right. And when they do that, I'm able to say, hey, you know what? Here's a link. If you could just cut and paste what you put in that email yeah. and pop it into yeah. this review. Because at that point, they want to contribute to you, right? Well, well they do, but yeah. they also just wrote the review. Exactly. Yeah. 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 There's no extra work. work. You're not asking for them to do anything. <laughs> They've just done it. Yeah. Yeah. You've yeah. just done it, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I would say, gosh, man, 80% of the time. That's how it works. And I used to send out email after email. Can you please do a review for us? Yeah. And people just, they grit their teeth and they just don't want to do it. Yeah. But in a way, you can convince them to write a review without even meaning to. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love that. That's that's devious. I, it's great. Uh, it's yeah. it, you know we didn't mean to do it, no, but, but it's now it's become a thing though for sure. Right. It's like hey, have you sat down and written your follow up yeah. letter? Yeah, it's good. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing you mentioned that I wanted to just circle back on, and then I think um, we've probably gotten people's brains full enough uh, for today. Yeah, you look like you're tired, by the way. <sighs> I've had a day. We'll unpack Have it you? later. Yeah. Um, okay. Was about value based pricing. You, I can't quite put my finger on the words you used, but it was like you dealt with yourself about pricing. Well, sure. We're all so concerned about. Uh, pricing and where where we want to be. And I, I've got friends I have these conversations with that are band leaders too. I was at a price point and it was not, it was a low price relative to the market. Yeah. But I was so successful with it. I didn't want to, I didn't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to change that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. I was afraid. I was worried that if I changed my pricing that I'd start losing a opportunities. But I had a buddy who convinced me, hey, he said, you know what, raise your price 10%. Just do it. Just do it and stop thinking about it. And I did it and it didn't affect anything. Right. You know, yeah. it didn't affect a thing. Yeah. And, and so a year later, he's like, hey, it's about time to raise your prices again. I'm like, okay, mm. yeah, I did it. Same thing, yep. didn't affect anything. I'll tell you this, that was f five years ago maybe. And I'm now double what I was at that price. Mm. And has it affected So anything? No, Same not sales. a thing. Well, Same sales. Let's put it this way. I don't know. I'm sure it has. In some respects, I've lost some of the lower end opportunities that I might have had. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? My schedule's still full. Right. Yeah, exactly. In terms of your <laughs> in terms of your booking count, no impact, right? No impact. And my average probably, sales through the roof. Yeah, and probably the gigs you're getting are better gigs. I, I would say they're relatively the same. I was giving it away. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I yeah. That was what it was. And I'm not anymore. Yeah. I look around and I see bands that are twice what I am. And, you know, that that's a different thing. Do you feel like but, you're delivering uh, twice the value? No, I, I don't. I've made a point of going out and seeing mm -hmm. some of these bands that have that kind of pricing. Yeah. And inevitably, their production companies 
that have great relationships yeah. and yeah. Th- they're the ones that are doing the gigs in the Bahamas and mm. places yeah. know, that I probably will never go. Right. Um, but that's okay. And they have 15 singers and 12 guitar players. <laughs> right. And right. 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 <laughs> What's the Bahamas of Idaho? Coeur d'Alene? Maybe? I don't know. Are you kidding? No, I don't think we have a Bahamas of Idaho. Yeah, well. And right now it's cold, right? right. So it's been over six, it's, it hasn't been over 60 degrees for 152 days. I shared with you in the Slack, my family has a cabin in Island Park, Idaho, um, right. that was bought by my great-grandfather. So it's been in the family a long time. And my parents and my little brother went up there. They live in Salt Lake City. They went up and shoveled the roof because it was 10 feet deep in snow <laughs> a couple of weeks you ago. You know, uh, yeah. It's crazy. Well, uh, yeah. In, in the valley here, we don't have that issue in Boise, in Ada County. It snows, but it doesn't. It, it's not like where what they have up in the mountains, yeah. not at all. Yeah. It's just cold. It's just cold. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it is. <laughs> well, awesome. Listen, I really appreciate all of your unpacking your story and telling us about your progress and your process and what you've learned along the way. I think it's really inspiring. I think a lot of people are going to take it and feed it into their workflows and their programs and their plans. And I just really appreciate uh, unpacking it for us. Well, thank you. As I'm telling my story, I realize I, I don't know my story as well as I should. But <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you had to tell it before. <laughs> the, the, well, you know, I have, but um, but it's definitely uh, not an elevator yeah, uh, situation. For sure. For sure. Yeah. All right. John Pisano, uh, Jukebox Productions, give us all your socials, all your contacts, everything, all the stuff you want to promote. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit me. If anyone's interested in finding out more about what we do, it's jukeboxproductions.us. There you go. And all the links and everything else are on our website. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. All right, man. Well, listen, I appreciate the story and I appreciate the inspiration and I appreciate you being a patron and oh, please. Uh, all you've contributed on the Slack and uh, super great. Super I'm going to have great. to up my uh, game here. Oh, you're doing fine. <laughs> you're doing fine. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so with that, we will go ahead and call it. It is uh, Cover Band Confidential for April 7th, 2023. See ya.